think about how they can work collaboratively across uh, institutions to uh, create um, a pathway for students from secondary education through post-secondary and grad education on into the, the workforce. Um, so we have a couple of folks here uh, represented and I've provided them with a couple of prompts on the front, uh, front end, but um, uh, we will you know, deviate from that as needed uh, and appropriate. But I'd like to take a moment to quickly um, um, introduce the folks that are here today. And if you can just give a quick hand, a hand wave when, uh, when I say your name, that would be great. So we have Ari Hong from um, uh, uh, Taubman College of Architecture and Urban uh, Planning. We also have Akina Bracken. Um, she's an MArt student here uh, within uh, Taubman. We also have a Michigan alum uh, who's now fac faculty at um, the University of Oklahoma and has been a participant in this, this work as well. Um, Carla Jackson, who serves, uh, Carla Jackson Bell, my apologies, serves as a Dean of Architecture and Manufacturing uh, at Tuskegee. Uh, university, the home that uh, Booker T built. And then uh, lastly, we have um, uh, Andrew Chen uh, representing um, Florida uh, A&M this uh, afternoon. And like as mentioned within the uh, blurb about this work, we, we just asked for them to talk a little bit about their efforts to achieve equity within architectural education, their consortium-based approach, the challenges that they may experience, so on and so forth. Um, so with that, I'll go ahead and kick it off. I'll pose the first question to Irene. Uh, Irene, can you tell me a little bit about the nature of this uh, budding relationship consortium and some of the activities that are associated with it? Yeah, there are a couple things. So uh, I guess the main thing is just to say that uh, this consortium is budding, but it's also based on some really long-term relationships that our faculty have. Uh, so Andrew, uh, Stephanie, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the faculty were really um, had you know started uh, their their academic careers in, in in the same institutions, and so uh, that uh, led to these the. The building of the consortium, um, and so what we've done is, uh, you know, the first year we got consolidated, and we had this awesome grant from Rackham. Thank you, Edmund. And then uh, what happened was, is that we we struggled a lot trying to find the right uh, kind of focus for that. So we had, uh, you know, some funding, and so I think in the last year or so, what we've been really trying to do is just diversify what we've been doing into a bunch of different uh, initiatives and uh, invite all of our partners. We have seven partners. Um, so uh, all the partner schools, I'll just kind of read them out really quickly, uh, are, as, as we mentioned, um, FAMU, uh, we have Tuskegee, we have University of Oklahoma, but we also have FIU, Florida International, Hampton, Howard, uh, Morgan State, uh, and so, again, it's a pretty big consortium, but what we've been trying to do is just figure out what makes sense for each of us. And sometimes it's three schools coming together. Sometimes it's the bachelor students coming together. Sometimes it's faculty coming together. And so I can give you guys a quick overview, maybe with a, a few things, is that, if that's okay. Um, I'm going to ask Andrew and Stephanie and Carla to, to give me a thumbs up if it's all right if I share screen and just kind of share some of the things we're doing really quickly. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to do that. Uh, but essentially, we have a bunch of initiatives and I'll just go over like three or four of them right now. Um, so I'm going to share my screen here with you guys. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, not this screen. I'm going to try and find the right one. I'm going to share the right screen with you guys. Uh, try that again. Okay, maybe not. How about this? Do you guys see FAMU and Talman College? Thumbs up or? Yeah, okay. And so this is an initiative that uh, we're working on with uh, Andrew. Uh, we're doing this together. We're basically thinking about um, how we can do uh, uh, kind of, I think, teaching and making at the same time. Uh, and we're really kind of discussing not only the, you know, the traditional pedagogy behind that, but what is the spatial technical pedagogy behind that, especially when we're in a remote context. Um, so we, we both have uh, these amazing CNC routers. And what we've developed is a workshop right now um, I'll kind of just show you some highlights where we're running with uh, uh, our uh, DMT program, which is a Rackham graduate program, uh, and we are right now uh, working on the router together. Uh, and I guess the highlight I wanted to show you guys was this next image is we are creating again the kind of uh, like virtual remote pedagogy that goes with that. So that's one of the initiatives I, I want to invite Andrew when I'm just going to, uh, after I'm done with this overview, I want Andrew to come and, you know, give his perspectives because it'll be more articulate than mine. Um, another initiative we're doing, uh, and this is one that has um, 
FAMU students as well as OU students and some other of our partner schools involved, which is uh, we have a mentoring program where advanced uh, uh, masters and bachelors of architecture students help mentor uh, this Michigan ARC prep preparatory program that we have. Uh, this program is run for about five years now, and it is with uh, Detroit Public Schools. Uh, Kima is very much involved in this program. Um, and what we do is we have 20 mentors right now. Uh, so you can see here, this is the ARC Prep uh, remote website now that we're not in person. So again, trying to understand how we engage all levels of architecture education. Um, you can see some of the activities we're doing. These are some of our mentors. Uh, we, we did introductions on the first day and how do you create sort of icebreaker, uh, icebreaker things uh, through the internet. Uh, so we did things like ask them what uh, sort of cheese-based snacks they preferred. So the mentors got to know each other and they sort of put them put their uh, pictures on which side of the cheese scale they're in. And then uh, we had some breakout sessions where we asked them why architecture school, uh, what can underrepresented perspectives bring to architecture. And again, they're working with 60 or so uh, Detroit public school students right now across three different schools in uh, the junior year of their, uh, of their uh, education. And so Another thing we've done is uh, you'll see this uh, website, but we have essentially what is a consortium mentorship journal. So the 20 mentors, basically we ask them what was awesome in your mentorship session today? What was awkward in your mentorship session? So they do five uh, mentorship uh, sessions with the students. Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing now, but some other things that we're working on are shared programming. Uh, so Howard and FAMU had this really amazing uh, spatial justice, uh, social justice series. Uh, and, and we were able to sort of cross-pollinate and participate with that. So shared programming. Uh, we also have faculty development. So uh, Tuskegee faculty have participated on this. Howard faculty have participated on this where we uh, have junior faculty uh, come and sit on our reviews, which is a large part of the kind of faculty development. Um, and then I guess there are other things going on. Uh, one more thing is uh, for our PhD students. Uh, we have, again, another kind of mentorship uh, program going on with uh, the MRC students uh, who are writing their maybe their first kind of thesis, uh, master's level thesis document with uh, students um, at Morgan State and uh, Hampton. So this is just kind of a, a really quick overview. And again, I'd invite uh, Andrew, Stephanie, and, and Carla, obviously, to contribute their perspectives on what they're interested in. There are other things going on, uh, like shared classrooms, shared research, uh, shared uh, grant initiatives that we're uh, also looking into. So again, I think the main point was that there are a lot of different things that we're doing. Um, and the diversified approach really helped us, uh, especially because we can then, uh, you know, kind of calibrate to whatever uh, initiatives seem to uh, really make sense in that moment. So hopefully that's a good overview. Uh, I, I took a, a little bit of our time, but uh, again, I'd love to hear the perspective of Andrew, Stephanie, and Carla, especially as, as our partners, what their, what their thoughts are, if that makes sense. Absolutely. In short, you all are doing a lot. So <laughs> uh, I think it's incredible, um, you know, that you are able to kind of negotiate, navigate across all the different activities and figure out which institutions should be included, how they should be included. Uh, and that coming from the MSI partners and not being driven by um, by uh, you all. And so, Andrew, I I'll invite you to add some reflections uh, on, on uh, what was this year. No problem, no problem. And it has been um, um, two years, and, and for us, almost two plus years in making. We probably, I remember about four or five years ago having a Michigan PhD student and then another Michigan PhD student about four years ago, Michael Abram, he's now teaching at Utah, coming for a workshop at my school for Architecture Week. But I think aggressively over the last two years, waiting and seeing when there is an appropriate fit, because I would say to any school, don't try to assume that your map and another school's map will automatically fit right away. And it's really just building a list of what is possible and then waiting and seeing when the time is right. I think the biggest thing for us, and I would say the same would be for Tuskegee and Howard. I think on one hand, there are the obvious reasons why different places do it. But I think the hidden reason why many people don't realize we do it to let the other students and other institutions know we have quality. It, it's For us, it's not as much about Sending, I mean, whether my students go to Michigan or not, I hate to say it, I really don't care because they're going to go and they're going to live happily ever after no matter where they go. They have, we have career fairs, Gensler, HOK, they're all here. They know we have, uh, you know, they know we have talent. 
I think, but part of the reason uh, I would say we do it and other places do it is let other people know um, you haven't had a FAMU student. Well, you know what, if one of them is in your classroom, you're going to realize they may be the best and brightest one in the room. And I think that is why I think this fall, there was a course taught by Don Gilpin of Michigan that had FAMU students in it. And this year we're doing a course with uh, University of Utah and it's Utah and FAMU students in the room. And I think part of it is to, we can't break the myth and help people know, hey, that there's quality here um, unless we are both in the same space together and all the students are on the same playing field. And, and um, I think that is very much why we do it because that makes, I think when people think of a program differently, you know, I think people's reaction is, oh, the poor little black college, we have to help them. And it's like, no, you need our help. You need our help, not only for the obvious things that diversify, but you need talented and smart people in the room. Um, and, and I think it's interesting. I didn't expect CL on here. And I, I, I actually realized <laughs> about, and about FAMU played Virginia Tech. FAMU was Virginia Tech's homecoming victim. Must have been about 10 years ago, 15 years ago before I had gray hair. And CL convinced me to bring FAMU grad students to, to Virginia Tech for a common thesis discussion. And I would always say that any of these partnerships need to be where there's a, an even playing field for everyone involved. And people will realize that, you know, again, like students, they have more in common than others. So our partnership has had many different things, but I think the unique part of ours is in all cases, the playing field is level. Mm -hmm. It's either FAMU grad students talking to kids Michigan wants to recruit, it's FAMU grad students and Michigan grad students in the same space. Mm -hmm. It's probably from both places in the same space. And I think that's what's going to be important because I, I, this is about changing Michigan. It's not mm -hmm. about changing FAMU. Mm -hmm. And I would say to every program unit that wants to get in these partnerships, make sure they're partnerships. We don't need donations mm -hmm. and it's partnerships and it's the majority school that will often benefit in ways they don't expect. Mm -hmm. But um, please note all other school, I've been told by my boss over and over again, you know, make sure every partner leaves a footprint in the sand mm -hmm. and they're not coming here just to steal the valuables. They got to invest in the uh, crops in the field mm -hmm. and, and leave seed or leave footprint. So I think up until now, we've been happy because it's been a clear benefit to both parties mm -hmm. and a clear partnership. We, you know, we don't, we, we don't need, it's about partners uh, and a win-win. So yeah. that's why we've been I appreciate you for sharing that. So the way that I've kind of structured the, uh, at least my approach to the, this work as uh, an HBCU alum, work for HBCUs and uh, kind of engage minority certain institutions um, in many different ways is to ensure that this work is uh, intellectually and culturally responsive, right? And I think you highlight that in many ways and thinking about, again, what, what value and assets do, you know, do uh, or does family bring to this space um, and how can we also learn from it? But ultimately it's always something in it for you and you all should be benefiting from this work um, uh, in ways that make sense to you, right? So I'm glad you shared those re um, reflections so um, candidly because that's what uh, I hope to see. And again, uh, it's, we kind of deal with this issue of, um, and it's not just within architecture and urban planning, but across the university in general, where uh, it's in many, in, incestuous to a point across, you know, someone comes from Berkeley and then they send their students back to Berkeley and so on and so forth, right? And then, so the way that I think about it is, well, we need to engage uh, our minority serving institution partners in the same way, right? Like how do we engage in that same culture, culturally and intellectually responsive way to where, um, uh, as you point out, highlighting the talent that exists in these places and challenge the elitism and bias that, um, that we tend to have or, or can often have on our side. So thank you for those um, reflections. I wanna um, shift into a uh, question in, in transition, um, not necessarily transition, but keeping it along, we have Akima who's uh, an MARC student here on the call. And then we also have uh, Dr. Bell who's also uh, in, in senior leadership uh, position, right? So we see two different ends of, of the, pers the um, perspective. So I'm curious as to, you know, from you all's per perspective, you know, what, what are the goals and benefits of engaging in uh, a relationship uh, in this way, both for you individually, uh, for the institution, and, but also the field and society at large. 
Uh, Akima, you want to kick us off? Yeah, I can start us off. Um, so I think, I mean, I always say this when I talk about the initiatives that we have, it's like they're really close to my heart. Um, and I think um, having done um, an undergraduate dis, um, degree also in a minor being, minority serving institution and I studied architecture, it can feel isolating and you can kind of feel like the only one. And I feel like what we're bringing um, with these initiatives is that we're being able to work with different students from different universities. Like today we had a mentor mentorship call and there were students from OU, there were students from FAMU, there were students from you know um, a lot of the institutions that I re-mentioned earlier, and they were engaging with our students um, at Todman and also students from Detroit Public High Schools. And so I, these are just things that I wish I had when I was in school. And so it's nice to be able to like, you know, draw those connections and meet with faculty and um, deans of their schools and and um, work with our school to kind of create these programmings because I think they're necessary and they're super important. Thank you for sharing. Dr. Bell. Good morning, everybody, or afternoon. I'm sorry. I'm in transition uh, from another meeting, so I'll be in my office in about five minutes. Sorry about that. I'm not going to uh, show my face while I'm in transition, <laughs> but I'll be be, uh, be on, on screen in just a few. Just want to say um, thank you for having this discussion. I was just um, leaving a meeting with um, with UVA in a partnership, a potential partnership with a, with a program that we're trying to, a master's program we're trying to start here at Tuskegee in historic preservation. So we, um, I will uh, piggyback on what, what, what um, Andrew talked about, about the, the need for right now is a, is a need in the country to partner with uh, diverse entities, diverse universities. And so only the seven architecture programs, which, are, which have architecture degrees, um, are really busy now. Um, we're getting a lot of calls from different, different universities to partner with us. And so I, we are a small program. Um, we only have architecture and construction, but we just, we just um, expanded to a, um, a degree, a BA in design. And we have a, have a a degree in a minor in African American history and architecture and a new minor in residential design and historic preservation. So we're 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 really um, inter, we're, we're really an interdisciplinary program, and um, we are we're in the process of, of working with a lot of different schools. I did I did want to mention that with um, Talmud College, the school there, we did work on a project with your dean, uh, Dean Massey, um, with a Mellon grant with Howard University. And we, we submitted that grant last, I think it was in December, um, for social justice. And, you know, and they, they were interested in, uh, the company was interested in um, having uh, how, how we um, combining African American history, humanities, and architecture together, and that that dealt a lot with my minor that I received from NEH. They they gave us a, a, a some money to start up the first African American studies minor here at Tuskegee, and so the emphasis is is um, African American studies and the uh, built environment and the Tuskegee architects. So that is something that that we are that we are, that we're looking for for the next uh, three to five years. Um, we also welcome and we we appreciate the faculty development piece where we have faculty that travel from Tuskegee to to uh, Michigan to be on the juries and you you're welcome to come down here when we when when the pandemic is over. Uh, but 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 yes, this this is very important. Um, this discussion is very important, and and um, we we have to you have to understand that I I'm a, I'll, I'll say this as a dean that anything that we do um, it has to have a benefit for Tuskegee at this point. And I'm a little bit different from Andrew, where where we 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 have a small faculty faculty here, and so we have we're overloaded with the things that we're doing here. So everything that we do and partner is going to be a, as, at a benefit for our program, 
And so that's what I had a conversation with UVA and Penn State. Penn State is already on board with the historic preservation um, uh, program, that the uh, master's program that we're trying to build. And it will be the only um, historic preservation um, program of the HBCU in, in the Southeast. And so that's, the, that's those are the things that we're that we're doing. We need that specialty area, faculty for the specialty area. So faculty development, factor, factor, fa faculty uh, fellowships would be very um, conducive for this the, the growth of this program. And so those are the type of things that we're doing here at Tuskegee that that um, that we want to reach out and let you all know that we um, we we are welcoming the 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 energy, but we want to make sure that you know that. That we we um, we need that we we're going to ask for that support because of our low number of faculty members. All of us are teaching, and so we we need we need to. Our students are, are, are great students, and they um, and we we and just like Andrew said, we had we have a career fair, and the companies that are out there know about our students. But it's it's so sad that the other predominantly white institutions don't really know what we're doing here, and so getting the message out. It's very important, and this and this discussion is very important today. Great, uh, thank you for those um, reflections. I, I re really appreciate it. And many ways, it highlights for me the um, like the how idiosyncratic this work uh, is, and points out the work um, that Irene, um, you know, is doing in terms of like uh, leading the consortium from Michigan's end, right? So I think it's a collaborative effort. I'm just highlighting that she leads it from our. Um, our end, but this idea of um, there's not a one size fits all approach to how we engage multiple um, partners, because as Andrew points out, again, this is a, a, an opportunity to leverage uh, and uh, a space to where we can say, hey, we, we have talented, we have talented students and you can you benefit from us. Right. And then also what I hear, you know, from the perspective of of um, uh, Tuskegee is, is like we have great students, but we also want to leverage resources to help support the build and building capacity at our institution to create opportunities and pathways for for our, our students, right? And there's value in, right. in in that. And I think about I have a background in sales. I work for a company that taught sales uh, in the past. And the one of the questions that you always think about is like, what's in it for me? So I, <laughs> as I'm selling something to somebody, they want to know what's in it for them. And then for me, there's always something. Um, but then on the, the front end, and uh, Kima, I appreciate your reflections. There's this uh, idea of um, both um, re representation and needed support for um, diverse student student groups, right? And acknowledging that certain groups may not be very well represented in these spaces. How can we engage those um, who are currently in the process or throughout the entire pathway, engage, get them to engage with students early, often in, in meaningful ways uh, in order to strengthen that pathway, right? So I see uh, end caps almost, right? What are we doing at the entry point within architectural, architectural education to think about how do we better engage students? How do we make them feel seen? How do we better support them? But then also transitioning into actual support during the time frame, and then engaging the, the talents and resources across uh, most, multiple institutions and institutional types. So, thank you for uh, for those um, reflections, um, Stephanie. I want to uh, um, pose a question to you, right? Because you um, you are similar uh, profile in many ways is similar to um, University of Michigan in the sense that you all are not designated a minority serving institution, although you all have uh, a, a pretty high native student popu um, population um, there. So what are the motivations for, for um, you and um, University of Oklahoma to engage in a relationship or consortium like this? That's a great question because, you know, it, in some ways we're between these two um, poles, right, on the call. So we are about three hours drive from the next architecture school, either south or north. And so one of the things that has been so great about this consortium is connecting to peers who are invested in this work because we all you know I think one of the things that brings us all here is this recognition that the architecture profession has failed miserably at diversifying and especially if you look at you know the um, number of licensed architects who are people of color or women and then like the head of firms you know things like that uh, 
we're way behind in architecture. And so here in Oklahoma, we're wrestling with, okay, what can we do in our classrooms? How can we connect to K through 12 initiatives? How can we connect to the profession? And so all of the initiatives that um, Irene and Akima and this group has started have given us a lot of different ideas and opportunities for the many ways in which to do this work. And, and what's great is that there isn't one way, right? Like this is a huge cultural shift that we're working on. And so just being tapped into what everyone else is doing and, um, and having all these opportunities for our students and faculty to take part and do the work that needs to be done, I think has been tremendous. And yes, for us being a little isolated, it's really, really important and helpful. Very good, thank you for that. Um, so um, one of the frameworks that kind of guides this work is um, from Carnegie Foundation Network Improvement Communities. And the idea behind that is uh, bringing folks together to address um, similar complex issues. And I, I, I don't mean to, I'm explaining this generally in an event that someone doesn't know. So my apologies if, if you're familiar. Uh, but the idea is like, how do you bring people together and to address, you know, um, complex issues towards and, uh, creating um, sustainable and scalable solutions, right? And so I see that in many ways at play within this consortium uh, as, as well, right? And doing it in ways that, again, are meaningful for each institution, but also the institution um, at large. And, uh, for a little bit of background and information, um, Irene inherited this work uh, from Shawana, who did really great uh, work, um, you know, kind of moving forward, uh, um, you know, kind of built a, a framework um, within that. And we had many conversations about that, that, um, that very thing early on. So how do we, you know, situate the work um, in a space uh, above ourselves, right? So if we only approach it from the, what do we stand to gain and don't situate it in what happens, uh, what are the ultimate long-term benefits, then, you know, we become short-sighted and, and we aren't able to make the progress we, we hope to make. So I appreciate that reflection and thinking about like how we share across institutions to, to make the entire um, field um, function even greater. So thank you for, for that, Irene. Yeah, I just wanted to add, I think maybe it, um, I'm probably just saying something that's already really evident, but I think the thing that's most meaningful to me is just uh, one, the creation of these relationships. Uh, I think like I've really gotten to know a lot of these uh, consortium members, even though I sort of inherited it, but like, I feel like, you know, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like a fan, I'm like everyone's fan club, like Andrew's like my research guru. And like, you know, I just, I, I like, just wanna really say, I really appreciate the relationships, but also I think it's that idea, you know, I think we've given a name to some of the initiatives to kind of collectively maybe think about them. You know, we're starting to, you know, term it the sort of stacked mentorship model that we're building here. And the idea is, and, and I know that this is a word that is often used, but the idea of, pathways or pipeline or all this stuff, it's its a little bit hard for me to digest, especially, you know, being in the thick of it right now, uh, particularly because it's so transactional. And so, you know, I really appreciate what Carla, uh, Dr. Bell and Carla saying about this idea that, you know, like, people are taxed it's like you know architects themselves there's one there's not that many of us right so we're underdogs to begin with two there's not that much uh you know like th there may be more money coming around but there's just like the energy of the people like you really have to be very strategic very surgical and very specific about how you're investing your time and so i just want to really say i appreciate our partners for continuing to invest in this and for like you know uh i think and also for akima and uh our other sort of you know younger partners on this for like especially like the mentors all that stuff really throwing their energy behind this and like believing in growing architecture overall as opposed to you know trying to find these kind of specific pathways or pipelines uh so uh i think that's the that's the thing i really want to you know say that i appreciate especially the trust from our partners to, to keep doing this very good thank you uh, so there's one thing that I, I think is always important to address. I don't think we ever like to address the question, um, but um, uh, I think it helps for us to improve on our efforts. So um, COVID withstanding, what are some of the challenges that you all face in trying to move a consortium like this um, forward? Irene, I'll, I'll start with you. I'm just gonna punt it to Andrew because I feel like we've been sort. Of, is it okay, Andrew? If I just punt it to you and you talk no about problem. that. No problem. No problem. Everyone's everyone's friends here. I would just out and out say the biggest challenge is not interest. 
it's time and money um, that, that everyone only, and I'll reiterate, restate what Carl had said, everyone's taxed and everyone has three jobs and it's not even a matter of what's assigned to you. It's no matter what you get assigned, you start to take on other stuff because everyone's an alpha. So, uh, well, you're not CL. Um, so I think it's about time and then it's about cost, you know, that uh, I'll roll to what, back to what Carla said that we all have responsibilities within our own place and we have to kind of hold on what is it my job to do and then what within that are the things I want to do because there are things I want to do that have nothing to do with my job and and, and if I go and do someone else's job because I want to I can't do what I need to do so uh, you know I think all of us it, it's those it's kind of blinders and then within the space of my responsibilities, where does this fit? And if it doesn't, then maybe I need to change my job. But for many of it, it's, it's I do it within my responsibilities, but I need to maximize the resources, my time, my energy, and the financial resources. And, and I'll go back to the notion of um, the feeders, the bookends, Edmund said, and, and pipeline. Within our university and most of ours, it's about getting kids from year one to out the door. I don't have time, energy, and finances to spend on pre-college, fourth grade to eighth grade, STEM decisions at ninth grade. I just can't, I'm, I'm hoping someone else can take care of that. And when they walk in, you know, you help them understand what it means to be architecture major, landscape major, interior design major versus a construction major. And then how do I get them from A to out the door in a job, living happily ever after or grad school um, with the resources I have, be it time, money, and, and just energy. That's, that's the real challenge right now. Yeah. And, and it's even harder now mm -hmm. because as Carla said, everyone wants to, everyone's got a DEI initiative now and they want to ask the black or brown BIPOC person, what do you think? And it's like, yo, if you haven't asked me last year, the year before, I'm not, I don't got time for you now. Yeah. So I, I appreciate the, uh, the uh, sharing that because I think that uh, is true, right? Uh, it, it becomes a trend thing, right? To check in with black and brown folks and other folks from uh, marginalized uh, backgrounds, right? <laughs> so, so thank you uh, for sharing that for sure. Stephanie, um, your reflections on like some of the cha challenges, you know, COVID withstanding. So um, I, I would echo what Andrew said, like it's money and time, right? And and I definitely thinking about like the question of K through 12, that's something we keep talking about here at OU is like, oh, there are all these high schools in Oklahoma City where if we could figure out a way to do something like Michigan is doing with the ARC prep program, that would be amazing, but we don't have the people or the time. So it's that's the hardest thing is seeing models that work and not having the resources to do anything similar and like that's a dream project maybe for this group is like is there a way where we could create a network of uh high school programs modeled on what michigan has done and and find funding to support replicating that elsewhere because we have the need here and we have enthusiastic people but we but we lack the resources so that's the hard thing is when you see something that works and you're like oh but we have no time or money to do it Thank you for I always say that uh, space and uh, space and time is one of the one of the biggest challenges and you know my experience that but money is also key which is why uh, we kind of position for providing the seed funding <laughs> for these types of initiatives right um, uh, yeah I, I wanted oh sorry before I interrupt here. Dr. Bell but I just wanted to say like especially with like Akima like I just want to say we're something we're really proud of also is that our mentors our student mentors you know, we pay them $50 an hour for five sessions. So altogether, that's like a $250 honorarium. And that's not a lot of money, but for them that really values their time, it gives them the flexibility. And that's one of the ways we're using the money is to is to give it directly to students. And that was Akima, <laughs> who was like, you got to put it in the students pockets. And so again, I, I, I really want to, you know, like, you know, shine a light on that perspective. And, and Dr. Bell, I, I sort of jumped the line, but uh, oh. I'm sure Ed, I, I think Edmund's got a good question. He's got a good question lined up. Yeah, so I mean, that, that was a, uh, I, I wanted to, oh, sorry, a question around um, 
what do you see, what seems to be promising from your perspective um, from this particular consortium? And then Kima, I have that same question for you as well from the student perspective. Well, I, I, I do I do appreciate that we have been in this discussion. I think this is, I know I can't remember, but I think this is a third year, Andrew or Irene. I think it's maybe the third, second year. I do appreciate that. And I, um, you know, I, I'm, I became Dean five years ago in 2016 and coming to a HBCU that I had two accreditation visits in, the, in within two years, um, architecture was getting reaccredited re and then um, construction was getting its first accreditation for the first time in history uh, since 1893. So I, I, I was very busy, you know, very busy and teaching courses. And so, and so the, you know, the NAB, they want us to partner, you know, we, they want us to partner and that's fine. Um, but I, I do appreciate this team coming together early on so that we can grow. Now I did say before, you know, like I just got off the phone with UVA and they, they want to come and partner with us, but like Penn State has already partnered with us. You all have already partnered with us. You know, of course the HBCUs are already partnering with us, but I tell my faculty all the time, if they don't have, if we can't be, if we can't, if you as a faculty member can't get anything out of it, then why are you doing it? You have to be able to grow as a, 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 a go, like Quasi Daniels, Dr. Daniels is, is assistant professor. How can you get your associate professor, full professor within that, within that six years? That is that is our main goal. You know, research, scholarship, um, um, and uh, mentorship, faculty development is very important to get tenure at these institutions. And so that's what uh, me as a dean, that's what I focus on as a faculty member and to tell the faculty member all the time, focus on that. Don't get sidetracked on all these different activities because they can they can wear you out with all these different activities but what is it going to do for you you know in this institution because if it's if it's not then I'm going to say no you cannot do that you know I put put that aside that's something that's personal to you that you want to do you could do that on the weekends but during this time that this is we have so many things we have so these HBCUs got a lot of opportunities got a lot of great students so put your put your drive into these students. Put your drive into making sure they get a job, making sure they make, making sure they go to graduate school, making sure they have a have a pipeline to get to where they need to go in five years. Okay, so in five years, and so we we do have a problem with that getting our students out of our out of our architecture program in a timely manner. That is the that is the main problem that we have now since we have COVID. It has been even harder. OK, because, you know, everybody's doing this hybrid model now. We're doing this hybrid and high flex model where faculty are teaching online. So that, that's very important that we continue to do this, but be mindful of everybody's time and be mindful of, you know, what can you do to benefit that, other, that, that faculty member, that student, you know, that program, you know, you know, not just going to juries. We can we can do that all day. But what, what can we do other than that? To, you know, provide fellowships for faculty members to come up to and get you know uh, get a certification in historic preservation. I don't know, but something something be creative. We have to be really creative now. We have we have this momentum now. It's this momentum around you know a diversity and inclusion and this culture of of of, of, of acceptance. So let's let's get motivated to do that and have a plan at the end to make this thing happen and keep it because like like one person said African American women are the lowest number of, of of licensed architects we don't have enough licensed architects and women and women African all women are very passionate okay we're very passionate so let, teach us something that we we want to learn. Not, not about traditional history of architecture, the traditional, we, don't, we know about all of that. Teach us something that we can take back to our communities and we can understand how we can make our communities grow to the next level. So I just wanted to, Very I good. didn't want to go too in a ta uh, <laughs> tangent about that, but that's kind of passion. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, I think that's uh, important. And given that we have uh, Kima here as a current student, 
uh, I invite you to, you know, kind of share what do you see as, you know, promising, um, you know, front, you know, promising things coming from this relationship. And then I'll add a second question. Um, um, what's one takeaway that you would share to, to the group um, who, um, you know, for folks who may be interested in establishing a consortium or develop, you know, developing out these type of relationships? So two part question. Join our consortium. <laughs> uh, a little plug there. Um, so I think I think the first um, question that you asked kind of like goes into the second one. Um, I think the the willingness of the consortium members to like sit and meet with us. One thing that Irene and I did um, when we first started working on is we sat down with as many uh, members of the consortium that we could and, and tried to figure out what their programs needed. Um, so like all of our initiatives kind of most of the initiatives stemmed out of like conversations that we had like so fam you needed this thing so we created this thing or Morgan State wanted um, to have they needed people to help with their thesis so we created a mentorship that had PhD students so all of these things kind of came out of you know just having conversations and and um, and I just really appreciate how honest and like open a lot of the conversations have been like I met with Carmina Sanchez at Hampton and she kind of like inspired uh, what we're doing for the under consideration discussion series like I literally had a conversation with her and she's like so this is great for um Tobin students like can our students come and it was something that we hadn't thought about because a lot of our program is just like we're used to being in the building and um you know it's kind of who can fit in the room um but you know just talking to her and it, it kind of like inspired us to open it up and have members from all the consortiums and it's just nice to be on calls and have faculty and students and, and engage in topics that you know um we're interested in. And so I just think those those partnerships and just the willingness of um, of the members to kind of just share what they need and um, share what they want or what they think their students would benefit from, it kind of, uh, it is definitely shaped the work that I think we're doing. Um, and then your other question, like a takeaway for the other consortium, um, I think it should comes down to the, uh, the research, I mean, the um, the relationships. It's like, if you have strong relationships, you're going to work hard when you trust the people that you're working with and they believe you and um, it's, and like you guys said, it's like an exchange. And I think everyone kind of has something that they can bring to the table. Um, so I think just basing it on just strong relationships is, is something that I'd, I'd advocate for. And I think anything good can come out of that. Thank you. Akima. Yeah, I'm just laughing because we've had some really good conversations. And like, even at first, you know, uh, we were talking to Professor Mohammed Garipur at uh, Morgan and he was just like so skeptical. He was so skeptical. He was looking at us <laughs> like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> and I might've got a thumbs down from Carmina too at some point, but it's like, we go back to the drawing board and, and we kind of reassess what makes sense and what benefits um, everyone. And I think it just, you know, it creates better work and, and better opportunities. Agreed. Thank you for, for that. Uh, Stephanie, one, one takeaway for folks looking to do this work. Oh, one, just one, I would say um, you need Irene and Akima and you need structure. <laughs> so I, I realize all the work they've done is to create all of these different structures. So for someone like me, it's easy to, to uh, tap into all of these opportunities. Like Akima will email and say, I need three students interested in this, or you know, we're looking to um, set up guest reviews or something. And, and that structure and all the work they're doing makes it very easy for us as partners. Thank you for that. Andrew, uh, what's one takeaway? Two, uh, uh, my, my one takeaway is, I'm going to figure out how I can do make two takeaways. One, um, all of the MSI, whether you're HBCU or HSI, I would remind people that they're all different. And I'm trying to do this presentation and I'm calling it unified, but not uniform. Um, there are things that FAMU has in contact with Tuskegee, rural population serving predominantly students of color, but there are also things FAMU has in common with Oklahoma in the middle of nowhere and, and things like that. And so they're, they're not uniform, public, private, rural, urban, young, old, they're as varied as possible. And I would tell place to keep that in mind. The other part is that, you know, um, Everyone, everyone has a strategic plan and people put money where their mouth is. And I'm always surprised of the places that want me to spend time doing stuff. And I'm like, okay, who's gonna pay for this? And then the question is, well, we're all gonna pay, you know, or you or me. I'm like, no, if you ain't paying for it, if you're not putting skin in the game, 
I'm not interested because then that tells me it's not high on your strategic plan because your strategic plan tells you where to spend your time and money. And same with my strategic plan. And so, you know, I think always keep in mind that everyone wants someone else to have skin in the game. Um, and I'm always surprised at people that, you know, want stuff for free. But, um, but thank you. Thank you. This has really been good. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, Carla, you're, you're uh, one okay. Sorry about that. I had a call, so I need the question over. I need to, I need to I, ask me the question again because I didn't I hear it. Sorry. It. <laughs> what What's your uh, one takeaway for um, you know for someone else or another institution, set of institutions looking to do this type of work that you all have been engaging in? So, what should they be planning for? What should they be considering? Uh, what should they be bringing to the table? Just you know, one, one take takeaway with that context. Um, I, I talked with, like I said, I talk, I, I was not going to work with UVA it, from the beginning. I, I thought that it was going to be too much, but we had a long conversation this morning and the uh, vice provost was on the call and he talked about research and a research opportunity for Tuskegee, you know, adding. So if you, if you, if you can have something as, as that bring to the table already that, you know, that you're doing that, that Tuskegee can add that we don't have to do a whole, whole lot, you know, like writing a proposal right now within, you know, right now would be very difficult doing something that we've already done um, um, and adding us to the table, add, adding us because, you know, the, the research that you all are getting and you're working for, you have to have a, a, a a HBC to, to collaborate with, and so with your institution. So make sure that you understand that that you do that, and give give the HBCs an opportunity to be first, to be you know to be first on the proposal. Give them the opportunity to do that because it's more attractive for companies to see that you know, like Tuskegee or Fam, you or Hampton are pushing this, and you are supporting us because you know again we do we we. He talked about a five million dollar proposal that he received, you know, just writing it the first time. You know, for one of us, it would take us a long time to write a, to receive a five million dollar proposal, even though we have all the we have the, the the minds here, but we don't have the support. And so, think of think about that. Make sure you you bring you make sure you let them know that you're bringing something to the table. You want to support. You want to you want to do this for your students and this this collaboration is very important for the future of architecture very good and irene uh you'll be our closer Which, as the my gosh so much responsibility mm -hmm. um i think for me the biggest takeaway is that uh, one size does not fit all and that um you know like listening really helps just kind of hearing what makes sense and then not being lazy about it, not just being like taking stuff at face value, but really trying to use the resources we have, both the intellectual resources, the time and everything to one, do the grunt work. Like Akima and I, like when she first joined uh, as the program coordinator, I was, I just kept saying to her grunt work. That's all we do, grunt work. We're gonna send the emails. We're gonna make those Excel tables. We're gonna send in those invoices and we're gonna grunt work until, uh, so we make it easy for our partners. And I think that's something that we've been trying to do. And I, I think I'm like doing the Andrew thing where I've got like five takeaways. Um, but, you know, I think again, this idea of it being mutually beneficial and even where, uh, you know, uh, Michigan is taking us out of, like, I think for another philosophy is we take ourselves out of the equation. So we aren't thinking about Michigan, what Michigan is going to benefit from. We actually are thinking, what is this bringing to architecture? What is this bringing? How is this enriching the community of architecture? How is this growing the community of architecture? Because frankly, we're still underdogs. There's not that many of us out there. It's a tiny community. Um, you know, and I think that's the thing that underscores like kind of my purpose in this, right? So my takeaway are those things, right? It's not one size fits all. Um, it's grunt work. And it's really just, you know, having a purpose that's outside of me or the institution or, you know, uh, the kind of more ego driven interests. Very good. Uh, I, um, I say this all the time, Irene, I think uh, architecture and the work that you are doing with you all, part, uh, you all's partners is an exemplar on campus, but I think uh, beyond as well. So I, first, I appreciate you all um, kind of sharing um, your thoughts and, and reflections. And I just kind of summarize those takeaways um, really quick. So Akima, I think you perhaps hit the nail on the head. Just 
engaging in genuine uh, relationships, like acting on good faith to build rapport and to establish a relationship is critical, right? Because anytime that you approach someone with the intent of, um, you know, pillaging, like, uh, people can sense that, right? And quickly and quickly run away. So I appreciate you even sharing a reflection on how some folks were a little, you know, a little reticent to engage, um, perhaps because they experienced that so many times before. Before, go ahead, Irene. Well, yeah, and I think that pillaging can also take the shape of wanting to give stuff to people, right? Like yeah. forcing stuff on people that they don't want, right? Like I think that that's also like a thing that like you know, especially in R1 institution, we're like, look at all the stuff we have. And like, doesn't everybody want our stuff? And it's like, no, people don't want your stuff. Exactly. You know? so, exactly. I, I want to say something about that too. That's a, that's a great, great, great point. We have, I'm not going to name the, the university, the, the, P, the, the PWI that I'm talking about, but we've had a relationship with the PWI for since we, since our inception back in, you know, the 1800s, both, both of the universities are land grant universities. But every time a faculty gets involved with the research and we want to collaborate with Tuskegee, they always benefit. Mm -hmm. They always benefit. They get the buildings, the big shiny buildings, the big new science building, they get the big grants. But Tuskegee gets absolutely very, you know, just a small portion of it. Perhaps. 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 And so they came to us, you know, when I was in the office of the provost to 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 uh, to partner with us again. Mm -hmm. And the faculty said, and the dean said, absolutely not, because you we can we brought we 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 partnered with you several times in the beginning. We and we 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 have nothing to show for it. Mm -hmm. We have nothing to show for it. So you have to look at it that way. You have to always say, okay, yes, this is going to benefit my institution, but what is it going to benefit the, in, the entire profession, mm -hmm. you know, the other schools? Because all of us are schools of architecture, not just HBCUs and PWIs. So don't, so that's, and, and they were very distraught about that, but I had to call, I had to get them on the call and say, well, you got to understand your history. You got to change your history. You got to change your mindset. You got to change what the, the practices you had before and do something different this time. You know, go, like I said, let Tuskegee be first on a proposal. Let Tuskegee get the brand new shiny science building. We need a brand new science building right now. We're the only school in the state that doesn't have a science building by Shelby. Mm -hmm. You know, Senator Shelby, you know, he's, 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 he's funded a science building at every university in Alabama but Tuskegee. Why is that? Mm -hmm. So, so just, just think about that, those type of things. And I'm, I'm glad that Irene and you, and I think that this whole committee is, is, is supportive and understand that, but I just wanted to throw that out there and let everybody know that that is, that is, please make sure when you talk to your other institutions, that is very important to consider. Yeah, I, I think that's incredibly important. I think those that uh, work with me, Irene and others know that's something that I, I push for and it goes back to the, again, the culturally and intellectually responsive in, in, engagement. One, we can't just you know take from and uh, benefit and gain. And then as Irene points out, like, we can't just think that uh, you know, we, we just have all the resources to give and there's, there's no, um, value to the institution. And again, as someone who attended it and HBCU, i worked for HBCUs and I've done research on minorities, you know, uh, serving institutions, broadly speaking, my, I work for Michigan, I'm paid by Michigan, but I'm working on behalf of the MSIs, right? So how, how do we create funding mechanisms that allow for us to uh, work in their benefit? Michigan will benefit because we say that we engage with the MSI, but how can we truly leverage uh, our resources and engage in meaningful ways on behalf of, of the MSI? So I always come from, from that particular um, perspective. Um, uh, yes, and we're right at time. Uh, so the, the idea behind these coffee chats is like you just have enough time to talk, uh, have a cup of coffee, and then and and then perhaps follow up uh, a, a little bit later. Uh, if folks who are, are on don't mind dropping their email, I think most of you all know one another. But just in case, drop your email for folks to reach out for any questions, comments, and concerns that they may have. Uh, thank you all for uh, those of you who are uh, join. Uh, your time, energy, and effort is truly appreciated. Uh, to our panelists, Irene, Akima, Andrew, Carla, 
and Stephanie, you all are incredible. Uh, they invite me to uh, their quarterly meetings and I brag about how well their quarterly meetings go. And I tell everybody about it. Irene can testify to this. <laughs> so, uh, you all are doing great work. I truly appreciate this, um, uh, what, what you all are doing. We have another coffee chat uh, coming up on March 31st. Uh, it'll feature a faculty member from Purdue that um, focuses on mentoring um, traditionally marginalized and uh, student, uh, students and women in ag science education. Though it's not architecture and uh, urban planner design, that type of um, uh, discipline, I think there's a lot to learn about, you know, and, and um, gain from that discussion. So if you all want to join in, you can use the same reg registration link that you use for today. Um, and with I that, I will tell you, at Edmund, um, we. <laughs> They, we have a HBCU um, forum on that day, so okay. so we won't. We probably I know my school. I'm, I'm sure Andrew won't, won't be there either. But that's but that is something that we would love to come to. But we, I know we won't be able to be there. We'll we'll record it and then. Okay. So we're doing a series of these. We're running as frequently as possible through uh, at least June. So uh, if it's not every week, there may be a week in between, but we're running these frequently. So April 7th, we have a faculty member from Illinois talking about inclusive teaching practices uh, to support students from MSIs as they transition into graduate school here. Um, so yeah, we, we have many more of these uh, um, coming up. But again, I, I appreciate you. I truly appreciate the, um, the work that you put into this. Um, and I know with Irene, I tend to, uh, I don't, I don't know if I tend to push back, but I think I set tight parameters around what engagement could and should look like. And I just don't want it to be a situation where we're just tapping the MSIs for their resources. Uh, we want to ensure that we engage in ways that, that, uh, makes sense. So again, thank you all. It's nice. Oh, architecture. <laughs> it's nice here. So hopefully you all can enjoy the day uh, here or where you are if it's nice there. So thank you all so much for, for joining in today. Yeah, I think Edmund and I were just going to loiter here for a little, a couple seconds, but it was really nice seeing you guys again. 